In this episode of Cloud Performance Atlas, we take a look at App Engine scaling settings to optimize our instance count. Will we find the right trade-off? Stay tuned to find out. In a previous episode, we helped the developer of Partly Cloudy Image Suite reduce her instance count with some clever shifting of workload from the server to the client. While this brilliant solution cut the number of active App Engine instances significantly, some folks have pointed out that we really should have adjusted the scaling values of the App Engine YAML file instead. Now, in uh, complete honesty, I've never actually messed with any of these settings in detail, so I had no idea what they did, why they did it, or why I should care about that. But that's what we do here on Cloud Performance Atlas. We figure this stuff out. As such, it was time to dig into the scaling setting file and figure out how they influence the instance count of our tests. Now, I, uh, I made some nice charts and things, but before we get to that, I have to take a moment and talk about how App Engine decides to start a new instance. I mean, we can't really start tweaking these settings unless we know what we're touching. See, App Engine serving algorithms are constantly deciding on whether it's better to queue up a request or spin up a new instance. This takes into account a significant number of factors for this decision, like uh, uh, request queue depth, average queries per second, average request latency, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But to make things more simple, let's focus on the four primary systems that you can consider in your configuration file, which can directly impact the decisions that App Engine makes about spinning up new instances. Number one is the number of concurrent requests per instance. Number two, how long a request can sit in the work queue. Number three, if there's any resident instances available. And number four, what type of instances you're using. In order to understand how all of these things played together, I decided to run a little stress test to see how how many instances we could spin up on the default setting with four seconds of static response time. Uh, obviously, this isn't a real world scenario. Now, when we throw 100 threads of connections at our application for about 10 minutes, we end up with a beautiful graph like the Google Cloud Console has that looks like this. My completely unrealistic scenario topped out at about 100 instances to handle my work, the uh, blue line right there. So we can start tweaking some of the scaling settings and see how that value responds. Let's start with an easy one concurrent requests. In order to optimize performance versus instance count, you can control the max number of connections you have per instance. The max concurrent request setting allows you to control this value. The default for this is eight, which we saw a graph for already. I changed to 80 and re-ran the test. You can see that the number of instances drops significantly from 100 to around 20 or so, which is important since this means my bill has been cut by a significant amount as well. The trade-off here is straightforward. The higher the value, the less number of instances you need to spin up connections. However, if you set it too high, then you're gonna see latency problems as your instance is strapped for resources, or it may cause new instances to be spun up if you eclipse the available memory of your machine. Lowering this value can help you find the sweet spot between the number of connections per instance, the resources needed for your requests, and the resources for your particular instance class. So uh, let's reset that back to default and see what the pending latency settings do. See, when a request comes in, App Engine's front ends will place it in a queue until an instance becomes available to service the request. If there are no available instances waiting around, then App Engine has to make a decision. Either it waits for one of the instances to become available, or it starts up a new instance. The values of min, max, max pending latency directly control how the scheduler will allow a request to wait in this queue before spinning up new instances. The higher the min pending latency value, the longer a request will wait in the queue before triggering a new instance to be spawned. Changing this from our default value of 30 milliseconds to six seconds, we can see that the number of instances generally drop compared to our base use case. Uh, it looks like we're topping out at about 65 instances or so for this test. Now, max pending latency, on the other hand, is the time after which App Engine must start a new instance if a request has been waiting this long. Setting this value to four seconds doesn't really see much change in the total number of instances that we're spawning, but it might just be due to the constant load that's being put on the system. I mean, I'll, it'll probably change once the workloads become a, a little bit more variable. Now, all of these settings so far have dealt with the requests themselves, but we haven't really talked about giving more resources to the instance. It should be no surprise to you that your App Engine instances are running on some physical piece of hardware somewhere in the world. And the slower the machine, the longer it takes to do heavy workloads, leaving requests in the request queue for longer. The trick here is to request the least powerful machine possible that handles your workload and doesn't force new instances to be created as a result. The uh, default for the instance class variable 
is F1. So uh, let's test an F4 instance and see how that changes things uh, up. We can see that for our particular workload, changing this from F1 to F4 didn't really do much to the overall number of instances. However, I'd expect that to change if we were actually CPU or memory bound instead of just sleeping for four seconds. No, okay, okay, okay. So we've tweaked to each setting and we have a clear picture of what it does and how it impacts our instance count. So let's find the sweet spot. This means that for our four second block of work, we want the average latency for a response to be as close to four seconds as possible. To do this, let's set instance class to F4, max concurrent requests to 80, max pending latency to eight seconds, and min pending latency to six seconds. The result gives us about 18 instances through our test and only about 400 milliseconds latency being added to each request on average. Now from here, we can start tweaking these settings to make trade-offs between the number of instances we're willing to pay for and the latency overhead it causes for our users, which is exactly the spot that we want to be in. However, this won't solve all of your performance problems in the cloud. That's why you should check out the rest of the Cloud Performance Atlas videos. And remember that when it comes to your users, every millisecond counts.